Hey, what is up, Rad Fam? Coming at you today with a long term review of my Brooks. B17 saddle. I've gone over 10,000 miles on this puppy. I'm also going to be talking about the Brooks B17 Ladies Standard, which is now called the B17 Short. Both leather saddles. I got one in brown, one in black. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like, what I have thought about this saddle over time, and would I tour on it again? Let's find out in this video. Boom! Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is the Rad Bike Adventure. My name is Ryan, and we talk about all things bike touring, bike packing, bike lifestyle related. It's a whole lot of bikes, so if you're into that sort of thing, consider gently tapping that subscribe button because we want to get you confidently prepared to tour this world and your own backyard on your bicycle. All right, so let's jump right into it. This is, again, the leather B17. Let's get a little close up on this guy seen some mileage you can you can probably tell i've also got my my safety pizza hanging off <laughs> hanging off the back here maybe i should actually take that off so let's just talk briefly about the brook saddle what the heck is this thing well it is a, a piece of leather it's vegetable tanned leather and it is stretched over a metal frame it's like a very kind of old school design it's five millimeters thick and it's uh, attached to the metal with these rivets and you can get different versions. Some of them have a cutout. Some of them have holes here. So you can actually use some um, string rope. What word am I looking for here? <laughs> to, uh, to lace the saddle up. Again, just different preferences, different points of comfort and relief for your saddle. Now, again, this is just kind of the classic standard, handmade in England still. And the great thing about these saddles is that because it is leather stretched over a, a metal frame, and I just have a piece of tape there to remember where to put my, my saddle when I put it back on my bike. So that's just what that is. But the great thing is that it kind of acts like a hammock. So it's stretched over, and then the point is that it breaks in over time. So if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. If you have been here for a while, you probably know that I pretty much adore my Brooks saddle and I do talk about it a lot. We have quite a few in the uh, RadFam collection, all different kinds. We have some ones that are more narrow for a more aggressive position on the bicycle. I have another one that is the premium with the titanium rails and the flattened rivets. Today, we're just really gonna be talking about the, the classic B17s, the regular and the short. So the short is owned by Darren, and she's not here, but she gave me some notes. So I will definitely be letting you know what Darren thinks of her saddle and what she thought of it over the course of the lifetime of our year and a half long trip. So let's talk about the things that I like first, and then we'll touch on some of the dislikes and kind of do a little comparison of the two saddles. So first and foremost, what I love about this saddle is that it really shapes to your body. As you can kind of see here, there's like some little dips on the side because when you first get the saddle it is just like hard as a rock okay so you're gonna be like what the heck do i do with this thing but once you wear it once you wear it once you ride on it once you wear the saddle underneath yourself no once you ride in the saddle for some people say 150 miles some people say 200 some people say 500 some people say a thousand i found the 200 mile mark was about accurate um, it just really starts to form to your body. Now you do have to put some proofide to condition it on the underside and on the top. And actually I have a whole video about that. I'm gonna link it up here. That's just about taking care of your Brooks saddle. And I do go into more detail about the Brooks there too. Once you do that and you ride it for 200 plus miles, let's say, it just starts to really form to the shape of your own sit bones, AKA your butt. And it just becomes very, very comfortable. Leather also has a really kind of smooth, shiny surface that allows you to kind of glide over it while you're cycling. And that really helps reduce friction and chafing. So that is something that is so, so important to me. They also say that leather is a more kind of breathable material, just like most natural 
fibers and elements are, unlike synthetics. So you're able to get more breathability through the saddle. It's not just plastic, right? Where you're gonna have nothing, no airflow or anything. There's also some holes. And if you have the cutout, again, just allowing more airflow, which is so, so important when you're sat your butt down on a bike for, you know, eight plus hours a day. Brooks has a super long history. I mean, they started making saddles in 1866, for goodness sake. So they definitely know what they are doing. It's just so well made. Like the quality control on these things is incredible because they are handcrafted still in England. And so I think that, you know, you're paying the premium price, but you're getting a premium product. And another thing I like about it is it just looks classic. It just has this very classic, old school bikey look to it. And maybe some people don't like that, but I love it, especially when it's on my touring bike. It just looks like I'm going the distance and I'm doing it in style. Another thing about the saddle is the, the lifetime of it, the longevity. If you take care of this, if you, you know, put the proof on, proof fight on when needed and you tighten the bolt when needed again, check out my other video that I already linked. I'll link it down below too. Um, this thing could last forever, right? It can last a lifetime if taken care of. And there's something about that that I really like. It's just a little bit more sustainable for me. One other thing I do like about this saddle is that it's very supportive because it is a firmer surface. You know, a lot of people would walk up to me on the tour and be like, how the heck are you riding on this thing? Is that even comfortable? I was like, first question out of their mouth was, is that thing even comfortable? But the thing is with a firm surface, you can balance yourself well on it and feel like you can get good power transfer. Like let's compare it to say the opposite of this, which would be like a squishy gel saddle. And I always try to tell people it's like the difference between standing on a hard surface or, sa or standing on one of those kind of like squishy uh, gym mats or something, or like a bouncy house moving around. And it's like, it's making you not balance as well. So it's kind of like that for your butt. When you can actually apply firm pressure and feel like it's supporting you, you can therefore get better power transfer moving forward. It also has a two year warranty. I think you can extend it to 10 years now. So if there's anything uh, like a manufacturing defect on the saddle, you can get it repaired at no charge. So that is also nice. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that I don't really like about the saddle. Gotta talk a little bit about the negatives. And one of those things is gonna be that it does require a little bit more caretaking. So you can't just kind of set it and go. You do have to look after it a little bit more. It's honestly not that much though. So it's like, it's almost difficult to put it in this category, but I think that it, for me, it's a negative because it turns a lot of people away that you have to take care of it a little bit more. Another thing would be that it's not waterproof. So you do have to put a cover on it. But if you're just riding it and it's raining, it's gonna to be totally fine. And if it sits out in the rain for a little bit, like, you know, it's not just going to disintegrate, but you do have to take care of it a little bit more delicately than you would a synthetic saddle. So I'm just gonna put that in the things that I don't like love about it. Um, another negative for me is these rivets sometimes cause some issue with like chafing. And mine have, I can kind of see some of mine have like probably with the sweat and everything have kind of like popped up a little bit, like they're not lying flush. And that is sometimes uncomfortable. Now you can get the more premium version and this, um, what's it called? I think it's just called the special, the B17 special. And that has the flat rivets. So if you can, I would invest a little bit extra money to get the flat rivets. Cause that was, um, that was kind of a bummer at times for me where I would like sit back on the saddle at times and be like, Ooh, I can kind of like feel the rivet. I learned how to sit on it. So it didn't bother me so much, but again, that's just like a little bit of a drawback, but get those flattened rivets with the special and you should be good to go. Another drawback for some people, I don't really mind this, but I'm just gonna put it in the dislikes because I think a lot of people will dislike this, is that it's heavy. You know, it's not a lightweight saddle. It's definitely a little bit on the heavy side. It is 520 grams. This one is a little bit lighter because it is a smaller saddle overall, but that's pretty hefty for a saddle. So that could be a drawback for some people. Another thing is that it is expensive. You know, it's $160 to start going all the way up to 310 for the super premium one with titanium rails, which is really nice. But yeah, that could be a, a deal breaker for a lot of people. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video right now about my sweet Brooks saddle, pop a thumbs up. It really helps the video. Thanks so much. We're up close and personal now talking about Darren's saddle, which is the Brooks Ladies Standard B17S. But I think they have just now renamed this as the B17 short. So I don't think it says lady standard on anymore because now it just says for um, women or for smaller bodied people. So I've ridden a little bit on this saddle because Darren and I sometimes would 
swap bikes and sometimes I just borrow the Trek 520 and ride it around. And I find this actually really, really comfortable. Now I didn't cycle 10,000 miles on it. So I'm going to tell you some of the things that Darren has said about it. <laughs> oh my God, this is hilarious. So some of the things Darren said is that it is quite a bit shorter than my saddle. Like it is a short saddle. It's shorter in, in length and it's shorter in height, but it is a tiny bit wider. I think it's like a millimeter wider. Um, but because it's shorter, it actually appears to be wider than it is, I would say. But she said that you do have to be careful of putting it on the saddle correctly because it is so short that sometimes she felt like too far away from her handlebars and that the wideness of it was sometimes rub her, rub her wrong. <laughs> it just didn't seem to fit her as well as minded. And I do wonder if that's because she's not, She's not like a super tiny person, like she's 5'7 and athletically built. And I just wonder if this saddle was actually just too small for her. And I can't remember why we decided to get the ladies one for her. Maybe it was on sale or we liked that it was black and we could just have the whole you know bike be blacked out, which looks super cool. Um, but she said in retrospect, she would probably just go with the regular B17. But again, I've ridden on this saddle and I feel like it fits me really well. So I do just wonder if it's more about like body size than anything else because I find it to be a really, really comfy saddle. And again, it just really depends on your body shape and um, you know the angle that you're gonna be riding in. But do know that it is definitely a shorter saddle. So just because you're a woman doesn't necessarily mean that this saddle is gonna be right for you. I think it's, again, like, I don't know why we always have to gender things. I think it's just for a smaller bodied person. Let me get out of here. All right, so in conclusion, Brooks Saddle, what do I think? 10,000 plus miles strong. It's probably like 12,000 miles now. I don't really keep track of how many miles I ride. This thing has gone around the world and besides a few little cosmetic scuffs because I leaned it up against something, I think it is still looking really, really nice. So to me, the 10,000 mile review says A++, two rod hands up. I think Darren would give it two rad hands up too, even though she wished that she kind of had the longer saddle, she still really liked it. And again, our saddle sores were pretty minimal. Um, every now and then we'd get the off kind of like ingrown hair thing that would happen, but that's just the nature of sitting in a saddle all day long and getting sweaty. If you are going on a long tour and you're debating what saddle to get, definitely give the Brooks a look, give it a try. Be patient with it. You do have to break it in. I know everyone hates the break in, but it's honestly not that bad. Put on some padded shorts, go for some training rides before your tour. Don't just arrive on your first day and think, oh, this is just gonna be great straight out of the box. A, a good thing to do as well is to measure your sit bones and go get fitted at a bike shop and see if the Brook Saddle is going to be a good fit for you or if maybe the short is better for you or the cutout. I've never tried a cutout saddle, so I can't really speak to that. Just try to see what works best for you. Maybe try a, a cutout saddle in a different brand and see how that goes before you invest in the Brooks. And uh, yeah, if you're going on a bike tour, a long bike packing trip, highly recommend the Brooks. And I hope you guys enjoyed my long-term review, long awaited, long overdue. Give me a thumbs up if you've been enjoying this video and uh, subscribe for more content. And remember to ride on. And if you are interested in getting a Brooks, click in the links in my description and that'll send you to the right place. I just, I'm, in, I'm so in love with the saddle that I want everyone to have one. And you guys, of course, I had to, I had to bring out the hat and the, uh, and the apron for this video, <laughs> hearkening back. That video has gotten so many more views than I could have ever imagined. It's really cool. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful and I hope this video is helpful and maybe it'll convince you to get your very own Brooks.